This is episode 4 of my growing a mango seedling in a tube series. It's day 115. As you can see the stem is getting thicker. It's a nice healthy dark green. It has no defects whatsoever. The first set of leaves, there's seven of them, with the seventh being very small, are intact. And then we have four leaves for the second set. And as you can see, there's a third set of leaves developing very quickly and it looks to be on its way soon. So everything looks uh, picture perfect except for the fact that the leaves are sort of ruffled on the edges. I don't know what causes that. It just is and I've never seen anything to indicate otherwise. So the second segment of the stem is sort of a pale greenish gray. Reminds me of uh, tree tobacco, an invasive that grows in San Diego, as I've said before. So I don't know how many leaves are coming out, but that looks to be a phenomenal number. But time will tell as to how many leaves it actually is. There's always some kind of detritus on these leaves. Um, dead bugs, perhaps, that were trying to feed on the mango and who perhaps got poisoned by the imidacloprid. So there's a bit of a spider web here. So maybe it's not picture perfect. And there's some here too. You can see a spider living underneath one of the leaves. I think they must be attracted to the scent and the presence of many flying insects. So um, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that stuff for aesthetic reasons. And um, yeah, so I don't want this whole thing to get overpowered by spider webs and filth because that doesn't make for good videos but otherwise than that you know if I wasn't doing a plant growing series I'd probably just let things be for a while and be a little lazier about the upkeep so I'm just going to use a cotton swab a q-tip to get rid of this stuff all right so I'm going to fast forward through that since it's not terribly exciting then I'll do my distilled water spraying. So I'm showing you this just because uh, it's a reminder that I'm still doing this. I still think it might be beneficial to wash off the leaves. Mangoes aren't supposed to grow in dry, um, hot environments like the chaparral of Southern California. So it's day 118. And normally I'd wait a little bit longer for an update, but um, as you can see, the shoot ape colmera stem is shooting out all kinds of goodness. It's red and the leaves are developing and they're still folding in half and a little bit yellow and greenish. So there's a lot of activity going on there. I think there's definitely going to be the biggest set of leaves yet. It may exceed the seven leaves of the first set. And there's uh, some kind of bug there on the edge. I don't know if it's uh, in any shape to continue, but I'll brush all that stuff off eventually. So the the misting, it helps wash off all of these bug bodies. And um, otherwise this thing would just be cluttered up with all this uh, unsightly pestilence. So the, the new growth is as beautiful as ever. And it never ceases to amaze how how beautiful it is. It's always a mixture of pink and uh, yellow and green. And I always enjoy watching the leaves change colors. So I'm treating a little bit more with uh, imidacloprid. It's really hard to water um, with any appreciable volume like this. So there is a downside. I mean, the, the stuff inside of the soil mixture which contains half sand, it doesn't hydrate very quickly, but it also doesn't dry out very quickly because it's all entrapped by this uh, plastic tube. And this plastic tube, of course, can't stand on its own. It has that downside, so I have to tie it to this wire rack. So, um, yeah, there are upsides and downsides to growing in a tube, but I think I've never gone this far, definitely. Um, with a mango seedling, so I think it's pretty much worth it up until this point. It's day 122. As you can see, the new growth, 
the third segment of stem is coming out and if you haven't noticed by now uh, I'd like to point out that the uh, the plant is growing a little bit crooked um, the second segment of stem that you see down there the greenish gray one it's uh, not perfectly perpendicular and straight out of the tube and there are many reasons for that I mean it, it probably was going to happen anyway but um, yeah well here's an example of a q-tip where there were a bunch of uh, bug corpses on the undersides of the leaves so things are definitely trying to feed on the plant that's why I keep applying imidacloprid and you can see um, other bug bodies over there so flying insects just keep coming in so yeah um, there are downsides to growing in a tube like this but um, yeah I think it may grow crooked anyways even if you plant it in the ground but um, it's all just exacerbated by the fact that I keep spinning this tube around and for the beginning of the series I didn't have this uh, perfectly perpendicular to the ground so um, aligned with gravity so uh, things like that can happen so not all of these uh, growths that I thought were leaves are actually leaves some of them are these uh, I wouldn't even call them tendrils or anything like that they're just like little growths that fall off I don't know if they're intended to protect the plant or protect the new shoots so it's day 125 you can see the curvature the bottom uh, segment of stem so I think over time all of this will write itself I think it'll all straighten out and thicken over time but even if the stem doesn't straighten out any more than this it'll be fine it seems like the second and third segments of the stem are aligned at least and the stem is very thick and robust in mango seedlings um, it's in no danger of breaking so there's another spider living on the underside of one of my leaves one of the second set of leaves of which there are four so I'll deal with that later and I'll have to do some other housekeeping work to keep this plant clean and uh, shiny so the foliage on top looks really good again the pink stem is very um, it's very dazzling and you can see at the shoot apical marrow stem there are yet more leaves coming out so the plant is working on a fourth set of leaves even as the third set is far from being fully developed so it looks like there are quite a few how many is that um yeah it's at least uh six of them so yeah um that's seven plus four plus uh i think six so it's like 17 true leaves, one of which is very small from the first set um, that you can see right there um, in the top center. And some of the other ones, like the one in the back, that's uh, kind of small too. So, um, yeah, I don't know why they all stop developing. And they're all different sizes and they're ruffled and, and things like that. Um, it's just the way my mango leaves always look but I think um, based on videos I've seen of other people's mango seedlings I think they get basically the same thing so the leaves are getting longer and they're going to turn yellow and uh, maybe one or two of them will turn a little bit more orangish yellow first and the rest will follow and these are getting really really long but um, so far nothing trumps the first set of leaves in terms of like breadth and size uh, at least for the biggest ones you know there's a huge uh, range of leaf sizes and shapes so um, yeah there's another notch uh, on the stem um, there are these birthmarks I don't know what to call them um, just markings I really don't think that's uh, from the imidacloprid treatment or anything like that it's just this set of leaves came out with these markings and as far as I can tell there were no uh, parasites um, infesting the leaves and I just don't know why they're there but they're there so we'll see if that happens with a fourth set of leaves meanwhile uh, spiders are constantly trying to spin more webs it's really annoying how to keep doing this but it just has to be done it's a uh, it's quite a bit of maintenance but this is my marquee franchise of 2019 uh, mango seems to be the most popular uh, growing subject 
although it's actually my avocado growing compilation over four months from uh, 2016 maybe spanning to the beginning of 2017 that compilation video of that series got by far the most um, airtime and uh, viewing overall so um, I am trying that again but um, yeah it seems like so far I'm having more success with the mango and this series got a much earlier start so um, pretty happy with the progress of this um, I don't seem to be encountering any obstacles if I didn't use insecticide maybe I'd be in big trouble and would have lost uh, everything basically just based on the sheer numbers of uh, insect predators that try to feed off of this it's just overwhelming so it's day 137 I've put some uh, weed clippings that I harvested while I was on a hike with a friend and put them on the top I'm sure this will lose a lot of mass as it desiccates but the idea is that you have um, your decomposing organic matter on the top not uh, commingling with the roots so the fungi within that form uh, symbiosis with the roots of your plants will uh, reach up there and help decompose all that organic detritus and bring the nutrients back down so you can see the, the leaves are uh, coming into their own um, they're sort of a, a beautiful yellowish green and they have all these birthmarks and there's another spider actually I don't know if it's the same spider I probably just didn't deal with that the last time um, take a lot of footage of my plants and sometimes I just uh, forget for a moment what I did or didn't do so um, this thing is getting pretty tall it's maybe it's well over a foot um, maybe not a foot and a half yet but it's almost there so this uh, third segment of stem is still elongating it's sort of a I don't know how to describe it like a like a pinkish uh, beige something like that so um, I keep getting these kind of spiders I've gotten all sorts of spiders on my plants over the years and this is just the latest one in who knows how many hundreds I've dealt with or um, jumping spiders and, and various ones uh, these kind of have these sloppy webs they're not beautiful webs like the the ones that orb weavers spin and it's always just one spider probably because they'll fight if there's another one especially if it's another species and if it's not related you know, they'll probably um, just eat each other and then so I only see one at a time so the second set of leaves is completely developed third set um, it has a way to go and it'll gain some turgor pressure and be more erect at some point but it's not far off I think the third set of leaves is not that far off from being full size so um, yeah maybe it's just sort of lacking in nutrition compared to the first set of leaves where those two biggest ones that you saw got a big head start in nutrition from the endosperm of the seed so it's day 143 um, there's a lot of mass loss in the detritus that I put there so I could put more weed clippings I should get something a little hardier say um, fennel clippings or something like that something that has more bulk because it always dries out and loses a lot of mass as far as how long does it take for nutrition to get from decomposing organic detritus on the surface back into the plant um, sources will vary I've heard that it all gets recycled in as little as 60 days which implies longer than that um, it's definitely not punctuated it doesn't happen all at once on say day 53 or some arbitrary number it's probably more like a trickle that lasts for a very long time so I don't think it happens in days but it probably does begin in days and over the next few weeks uh, nutrients will get in so uh, this plant might not be living off its endosperm anymore um, it's hard to tell because I'm not going to dig in there and find out but um, you can see again these birthmarks sort of look like uh, miniature microscopic cigarette burns and you can see the leaf primordia coming for the fourth set of leaves I don't know when that's gonna happen but maybe give it another two or three weeks and it will 
So the leaves are more erect now, they're gaining turgor pressure, and yeah, I, I don't know how much nutrition this plant is drawing from the cylindrical soil sand mixture, that mass, and how much it's still drawing from the endosperm that the seed came with. I just don't know, and I figure, um, you know, I'm not really up for miracle grow fertilization at this point. Tons of people complain about that anyway. Um, I'll try just putting more and more weed clippings on top to see what happens. I mean, I'm not against using miracle grow, but um, if the plant's doing just fine without it, I, I'm sort of loath to upset the balance and potentially burn anything by over fertilizing. Uh, but if I do, I'll make sure to follow the instructions and just have it dissolved. It's just that for a soil mass like this, it's it's kind of hard to water at any given time. And um, it's day 150. You can see all this uh, terrestrial algae, I believe. You can see the roots have gone pretty deep. So it, even in the last episode, I felt like uh, the roots had already reached the bottom or were just mere inches away. And instead of just a gross green, um, for the algae, you see sort of a lot of orange too, and you see even more uh, new roots, lateral roots, crowding here. So I think this cylinder is not too far away. Maybe within a month or, or so, it'll be completely crowded out with roots. And mango roots are very beautiful in that they're always um, sort of that deep burgundy. And in that series where I had... Uh, it growing in a Snapple bottle indoors with LED lights for 98 days. Um, you can just see how, how beautiful the roots are. So that's something we'll never get to see again because um, everything's buried underground here. And the colors of the stem segments haven't changed. The third segment's uh, much taller and it's all, in all likelihood mature and it won't get any longer than this I feel. And I feel like these leaves are all mature. I don't know what's up with the birthmarks. Um, but, you know, what's done is done. I hope that doesn't continue for the rest of the sets of leaves. I don't want them to be marred. I mean, it's not really that unappealing, but it's just, uh, you'll definitely notice it just based on the way I'm filming it. My seedling is on its way to becoming a sapling. If it gets to be over my height in addition to the three feet of height of this tube, then the top leaves will no longer be getting any sunlight. I'll have to think of something to do. Um, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Maybe I'll just uh, tilt this tube and fling it over the edge of the balcony.